I'm so excited to tell you all that Destiny 2's The Witch Queen is by far the single greatest campaign in Destiny 2 history. By far, I am so blown away. The level design, the pacing, the story, the voice acting, I could sit here all day and just tell you every awesome thing about the experience that I've had with the latest expansion. I do want to take a brief moment at the start of this video to tell anybody who's looking at this video as a should you start or should you return? There's some key, key critical information. I can't even say that right. Key critical information that I'm going to have for you. And if you look in the YouTube banner down below, you should see the chapter markers that will take you to that at the end of this video because the start of this video is going to be overwhelmingly positive. There is so many good things to know about this game. At the end of the day, I think anytime everybody talks about Destiny, the gameplay is by far the center stage. Bungie has nailed the gameplay for Destiny in such a proficient way that no matter what, whenever you step away or when you start this game, it feels incredible right from the first moment, from the first weapon you pick up, from the first ability that you use. And so my review here is only going to touch on gameplay and what you just heard because it goes without saying. It just feels good. It just feels right. And the rest of it's going to talk about the Witch Queen and my overall experience with it. Now, obviously, the Witch Queen is building up to a bigger story, and that's actually one of the things it does incredibly well. It tells a story that has been built up to me as a longtime Destiny player. A lot of people come in and say, oh, I didn't even know you played Destiny. And I get to say, like, yeah, I've been playing since Destiny 1's beta. I have been a fan of this genre, of this game for a very long time. And I, at the same time, have had a very complicated relationship because occasionally they like to do silly things. And that kind of frustrate me. And I usually end up making that known. But here we are. Newest expansion. An expansion that I was originally thinking about sitting out on, but an expansion that brought me into the game as I kind of expected it would, but because of so many awesome friends in this community here, you guys said, hey, Brian, come play Destiny. And I said, well, that's an easy ask. Okay, I will. A couple things that I, I, I mentioned this earlier in a video on this channel, why I was returning to play the Witch Queen, but the Void 3.0 update by far is incredible. It's so good. It feels so good. And it gives my imagination so many new options to play around with. I think that's one of the things I kind of felt cheated on when we went into Destiny 2. That's the thing I kind of felt weakened overall by the top tier, mid tier, and bottom, <laughs> and bottom tier tree system. I understood it from a balancing perspective, but it really kind of limited the, the imagination, the fantasy that Destiny is supposed to ensue. You know, in, in and so the fact that we're getting Void now, and then they've already committed to doing Solar and Arc later, tells me that just an investment in my time in this game is easily well worth it. So, what do they get so right? Well, first and foremost, they have the legendary version of the campaign. This by far has made going into these situations, into these, these fights, so much more intense, so much more thrilling, and so much more worthwhile when playing with friends. It gives you that sense that no matter how much investment that you've made into the game, the game's going to punch you back. And I really respect the heck out of that as a player. There's always a debate within the community, uh, within any gaming community, not specifically the Destiny community, about game difficulty and its purpose and its, you know, and its role within gaming. And I think that they adding this as an option really does kind of flex what we've been wanting to see as a part of a campaign for the longest time. The ability to switch between classic and uh, this, you know, uh, legendary, this uh, this leg uh, legendary mode uh, is, is by far the best. And then one of the things that they fix overall with it is that when you're going and doing the campaign, you can easily pick a campaign mission to run again at the different difficulty levels. So I was able to play the legendary version. And then if needed, if I was playing solo or if I was just con constantly running up against walls, I could scale it into the classic mode just for that that quest. And I really actually appreciated that setup. It also streamlines the questing and the story and the campaign in a way that we haven't seen before. Typically in Destiny's uh, story kind of, you know, campaigns, there's always been these moments, these beats where you kind of feel lost, where you really don't know what you should be doing. And so then you kind of have to go read a quest. Then you kind of have to maybe go do this other thing. And then all of a sudden, then the story then picks back up. They nailed the pacing with this. It felt fluid right from the beginning all the way to the end. I never felt lost. I never felt like I had to go do some needless 
level grinding over on the side. And I really appreciated that about this expansion. And you might be at odds with that. Maybe you've had different experiences within the Destiny campaign in the past, but I know speaking for myself and also talking with others that there have been these moments in Destiny's storytelling that just kind of felt like odd. And that, you know, the Witch Queen solves for all of that. It felt like such a fluid campaign that I honestly never wanted to put it down. And when it ended and when I, you know, when the story concludes, it sets itself up so great, you know, greatly for the future itself that I, that I am beyond excited to see where this goes. Now, like I said, gameplay in and of itself is great, but this is for the, those of you looking to, to know, should you return or should you start in the first place? This is where we're going to get into some of the problems that I've had overall, like contextually with the expansion, it's rock solid. Like it's an easy buy. I would easily recommend purchasing the Witch Queen if you haven't already. But this is where we get into monetization, how the expansions function. And as expansions get vaulted, you, the player, need to be very well aware of that before you decide that if you want to invest money or not. If the question is, should you start this game? Start with the, the New Light version. That's going to give you that gameplay hit. And if you don't like the gameplay, well, guess what? You're just, there's nothing I can do. There's no story that's going to get you over that. If you don't like the gameplay, I can respect it. I just don't understand it. But that's going to give you that, that sense of what this game is about. It's not that meaty. Like you can go into PVP. You can go into the strikes. You can experience like everything this game has to offer. But if you really want to experience everything this game has to offer, obviously you're going to want to purchase it. You want to purchase the expansions. And the expansions here are, are sold to you a la carte. So if you buy the Witch Queen, no, you do not get Beyond Light. No, you do not get Shadow Keep. You do not get the previous expansions. You have to purchase them as a la carte standalone expansions. The other thing you need to be aware of is that in the Witch Queen, one of the most beloved campaigns prior to this, which was Forsaken, has left. It's been vaulted with the promise that it will come back or there's something of that nature in the future with this game and with this franchise. What that means is still ethereal to a lot of us. What that means is that the game is kind of this living world and over the course of time, things about it get removed and thing, new things get added. And if that's a deal breaker for you, just know that now. Like as long as you know that, you're not gonna be surprised. If you're okay with that, then you can jump in and you can decide to spend money on this game knowing that there's a chance that at some point the Witch Queen is not actually active within the destiny 2 game we don't know what the future holds but we do know there are two more expansions on its way uh that would be lightfall and then the the final shape and who knows what the future will hold after that i'll be sure to keep you guys up to date here so just note when it comes down to the monetization that's a point of contention that's a deal breaker for some because that was actually introduced after the fact after the fact is kind of the key aspect so if you are deciding whether you want to return or you want to start that's something that you should know. And that's a personal decision that only you can make. And for me, at the end of the day, I'm hooked in. So I'm obviously biased. I love the game. I love the story. I've been playing it so long. I'm just going to be interesting to see where they go from here. And with the Sony deal, in fact, that Bungie's joining Sony, I wonder if things will ultimately change and what the future holds for Bungie's next IP and what the future holds for Destiny 2. So we talked about content vaulting. I think that's the most critical aspect that players have to decide for themselves. But now I kind of want to finish up with a couple positive thoughts. Overall, I really enjoy Destiny's PvP. The biggest frustration for me and why I ended up taking the longest break in my Destiny 2 career uh, to date was, and I say career and it sounds silly, but it, it's the word I used, uh, was essentially because we haven't seen any PvP updates to the game itself. Like we haven't had maps. They took out maps with Beyond Light. We got two new maps with the Witch Queen and more to come, I think. And also I'm told Rift is coming back as well. So as it exists, I'm happy to see some kind of investment in the PVP side of things. The investments they've made within the vendors and how like your various reputation grinds work, I think overall has been a vast improvement to the flow. The fact that they've removed the sunsetting aspect, which was very controversial and frustrating. And then I'll, uh, you know, they've removed that. So overall, I feel like my investment in my character and my gear is a little bit more balanced. And I think a lot of the issues ended up being that there's, there's problems that I have with FOMO and that's the fear of missing out. And I think Destiny has some work that they can still do in that area. And I hope that they look to, you know, new ideas, like maybe not having your battle pass expire and allowing you to equip past battle passes so you can grind out those rewards if you so choose. That would be a real big win, I think, as a player 
and as this uh this game evolves but that's going to be something i'm going to keep advocating for the fact this game has cross play cross save that full cross play support means a lot to me it means that uh, no matter what if you're on playstation xbox pc like doesn't matter where you play we can all play together and that i think essentially unites the community so going forward it's going to be interesting to see how this uh season plays out for me and and more in the past i've ended up having like a baby every freaking expansion and i've got five uh <laughs> five kids right now so we've had a lot of change in our lives over the course of destiny 2's release and this is the first time where i'm actually like you know not necessarily having to change a newborn diaper, try to get some level of sleep and at the same time trying to play with my friends there's a little bit more flexibility and maybe my life situation has evolved that makes me way more positive on my overall experience with the expansion so far i'll have you uh, i'll keep you guys up to date on on that anyway guys i want to put uh, my thoughts down here for you and hopefully you got something good out of this video i hope that you uh, you know whether you decide to jump in return or stay away from destiny you can always let me know there is there's no wrong answer the best answer is that you find something fun to play and you enjoy that thing you know that's that's what i always hope but i wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the state of destiny 2 especially with the latest expansion uh because you ask and because as a content creator i like making videos so uh guys thanks so much for your time hopefully you enjoyed hopefully i'll see you in my next video but until then take care yeah it's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.